This instructional video is designed to show you how to execute a proof of a path independent function, i.e. a state function. Uh, the first step is to set up a path diagram with some set of stated conditions. So uh, we will have two axes, which is typically something like pressure and uh, volume. We have to identify a common starting point and a common end point. And these will be connected by some path that's defined under those stated conditions. The next thing you'll do is start defining other paths. So let's have one that drops down here, goes to C and then B, and we'll have another one here and here. So that point would be D. Now at this point, you have your different paths. And so we have uh, A to C to B as a second path, and we'll have A to D to B as the third path. Now once we have that done, we can move to the second step which is to write the change in the function for each path. So we want to write change in function for each path. Now, based on the stated conditions in part one, what you will expect to see is a well-defined, fairly understood result for A to B. So, we know what that is, so that's some known thing. And now what we're attempting to define are the other paths, A to C to B. And we're going to want to compare that one, uh, let's use blue. And path A to D to B. And so once we've used the defined conditions as well as the specifics of points A, B, C, and D to determine what the change in our function is for each path, we're prepared to move to step three. And this one is the most uh, straightforward because here you are simply going to compare. If it turns out that the answer here, here, and here are all identical, that means that your function f did not depend on the path. Path independence is a central feature of state functions. So having this properly labeled, carefully described, and carefully considered, having that comparison turn up everything identical, will give you the desired result of proving that something is in fact a state function. 